Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the thunder of wonder, the six foot two Rabba Kazoo, who sleeps on a bed of radioactive hyperlinks and shits opinion for breakfast. Oliver Thomas calls for Generally speaking, the word involuntary isn't one you're going to be happy to hear. Involuntary muscle movement, manslaughter, bankruptcy, commitment to a mental institution, for example, even an involuntary good time is, I'd say, highly suspect. But there is one involuntary thing in this world that I think is a good fit for our show's ongoing look at perfectly wonderful and horrible things, as it is often a pleasant side effect of something awful. Involuntary parks. An involuntary park is a term coined by science fiction author Bruce Sterling to describe, in a nutshell, an area that has been rendered undesirable for humans, which has thus been left to be reclaimed by wildlife. The causes for this are pretty much always awful, as demonstrated by the Zone of Alienation, which is the name for, of course, an area heavily contaminated by radiation when the 1986 Chernobyl disaster happened, and not the name for the five-foot radius around yours truly. Now, the lingering radiation certainly puts a damper on any picnics you might want to have in this particular involuntary park. The fact that there are still roughly 400 humans who have refused evacuation also makes the definition a bit wobbly. However, given the original population of the area, cities remain an urban explorer's wet dream where there are plenty of incredible sights to see and not touch. With some parks, they've not only come into existence because of something horrible, they've also got terribly unsuitable names as well. The Love Canal Toxic Waste Disaster is the first to come to mind, Love Canal being a neighborhood in Niagara Falls. It's especially marvelous because the toxic waste came from a company named Hooker Chemical. An honorable mention in this category would be Earthquake Park in Alaska. The park itself doesn't have a terribly cringeworthy name, but the fact that the earthquake which created it was dubbed the Good Friday Earthquake really sticks with me. What a Good Friday! Naturally, we've saved the best for last, and also naturally, our most highly recommended involuntary park involves North Korea. Specifically, it involves the Korean Demilitarized Zone that was created in 1983 at the end of MASH. In 1953, at the end of the Korean War. Thanks to how hostile this strip of land has been to humans for so many decades, about 249 kilometers length of it has become a temperate haven for 2,900 plant species, 320 types of birds, and an additional 70 mammals. This includes some exceptionally rare species like the red-crowned crane, potentially the Korean tiger, and the almost mythical Jerry Bruckheimer chick flick. It's also just a stone's throw from Camp Banifus, which has what has been described as the most dangerous golf course in the world. There's only one hole, but the course has been surrounded by landmines on three separate sides, and there have been multiple reports of people accidentally detonating mines when they're trying to get a hole in one. For those who are curious, the second most dangerous golf course is a Canadian one run by Sean McLean, whose insistence on live snakes being used in place of golf clubs helps to make sure the games are lively, if not necessarily lived through. <laughs> An involuntary park is a term coined by science fiction author Osser Chaucer Blosser Fosser uninhabitable or undesirable at least for use by human beings, which has thus been left over to be taken over by over animals over over.